اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In the last session, we looked into what if the conditions are not necessary. Now moving on, what if your scores are reflective and formative? Now for example, we've got combination of reflective and formative constructs in our model. Now previously, the examples that we discussed only had reflective constructs. What if your constructs are formative? Now, in order to deal with formative constructs, what we need to do is that, let's look at this. For PLS models, reflective constructs, we recommend focusing on the latent variable score. So, if your constructs are reflective, you only focus on latent variable scores from PLS SC. Now, for formative constructs, we recommend focusing on the latent variable scores in case of endogenous constructs. Now, if your construct is endogenous, only use the latent variable scores as the objective is usually to explain and understand relation to the construct so you want to explain the outcome and how the factors influence the outcome whether they are necessary or not now what if your constructs are exogenous and they are formative so for exogenous constructs it is recommended to include the latent variable scores and the individual indicators, so use both latent variable scores and the individual indicators as we may want to complement the analysis on the construct level with analysis for the individual indicators. Now, what happens in formative constructs is that individual items form a construct. So, we want to find out whether as a whole the construct is necessary or whether individual indicators are necessary. Now, if one or more exogenous constructs are formative, we recommend running additional analysis using single indicators of the formative constructs. Now, if you've got exogenous constructs as formative, use single indicators and the whole construct as a predictor as well. Now, therewith, we can test whether the individual indicators forming the construct are necessary condition or just the individual items are necessary. Now, I've got an example here. This is my measurement model. And in this example, what I have here is, now the, this is my higher order construct. Now, I've got a higher order construct, internal marketing, that is made up of three sub-dimensions. These are reflective constructs. This is reflective as well. Now, this is, these are the sub-dimensions for a higher order construct. But for now, they are reflective. At lower level, they are reflective. So, what I'm going to do is, let's go to calculate. Now, all the other steps remain the same. Now, those steps that we discussed in the first session on necessary condition analysis, the link will be shared in the description. Those steps remain the same. You have to assess the measurement model, reliability, validity, and all those quality criteria have to be assessed unstandardized all good let's start now latent variables create data file now in this case i will need manifest variable scores for now so i'm not going to use the other ones i'm just going to keep these two and i'm going to call it unstandardized so i've already got it so i'm just going to use it override now go back now i'm going to go to this model now this is the same model as earlier one i've got im as a higher order construct now so for for now let's delete it here it is and vision development and rewards now these were reflective constructs previously now they are items for higher order construct of im and they are formative, right click, invert measurement model. Now connect it. Hide the indicators. Now what I'm going to do is, I need latent variable score for this now. So 
because I've got this as formative. So I need latent variable scores both for my lower order constructs and the higher order construct that is made up of the lower order constructs. Calculate PLS SCM algorithm. Unstandardized data start calculation. Now create data file. So I only need the latent variable scores at this time. But I need the individual scores from the previous analysis, the latent variable scores as well. So I'm going to keep this manifest here. I'm just going to create. Now go back. Now we are going to do our necessary condition analysis. So regression and call it NCA. Save. Now, where is my DV? Here is my DV. Put it in here. Now, where are my individual variables? So first of all, I'm going to do it on the individual indicators that make up the higher order construct or higher order formative construct. Now, these three make up IM. So I'm going to just put each one of them and CC, let's say I need OC as well. Drag and drop them here. So here are my variables. Now, Calculate necessary condition and as now the process remains the same as we have done earlier. The interpretation remains the same. Let's look at this. Bottleneck table. So all of them start to be necessary conditions when you reach 80 or when you want 80% of organizational performance. So this is easier to interpret. We have already done it before. Now which ones are significant and see a permutation. Let's do 10,000 quickly. Now all of them are significant. Now let's go back and let's do one more thing. So I want to find out about IM as well. All right. So let me copy it to Excel because I want to compare something here. So let's go back here and where is IM? Here is IM. So I'm going to put IM in the same model for now because I want to check something here. So now let's go to calculate and see permutations start. Copy to Excel and let's paste it here. Now look at this. Look at the effect size the same as previously because if you remember we did it in the first session that it is a bivariate technique this is the inclusion of IM so with the inclusion of IM the other values did not change because it is a bivariate technique so each of those antecedent conditions are assessed whether they are necessary for the outcome or not so the inclusion of other variables does not influence the previous values. So this is how you can use necessary condition analysis if you've got formative indicators or formative constructs in your study. Thank you very much.